Hello, it's Ty Anderson for Add-in Express, and in this part four of our end-to-end -end series, we will complete the coding portion of our add-in by writing code for the ribbon, the command bar controls, as well as the office backstage. What we'll do to get started is move over into the add-in modules code window, and we're going to create an overloaded method of this create task method. So let's do private void create task, and we're going to pass to it a title and another string that's we'll call it a due date and then another string called source now this method will be a, a way for us to create tasks from any of the task panes but then switch according to whichever app is our source so we we can handle the different object models as needed. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to create a tasks data set uh, table adapter or a task table adapter, but we have to get to it via the task data set table adapters. There we go. We'll call this TA equals, but let me collapse our window so we have room. And we'll say a new task data set table adapters, task table table adapter all right then we need a date time object and I'll call it DTM due for the due date and we'll run a convert to a date time of the due date string that's passed to this method then we're going to run a switch statement and we're going to run that switch statement on our source value. So let's go ahead and set up our case values. The first will be Microsoft Excel. We'll do Microsoft Word second. We'll do PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint. And we'll set up a default case as well. Go ahead and put in my break statements because I sometimes forget to do that. and paste. Now for each one what we want to do is we're going to call the insert task method that we created earlier and we will pass the title as the title. For the decimal we're just going to continue to pass zero. Uh, you could choose to do different, different if you like. Then for the due date, we'll pass the DTM due object. For the source, we'll pass the source, va source value. And then for the link, what we'll pass is the Excel app, active workbook, full name. And then what we want to do after, whoops, after Filling in that task, we then just want to uh, refill the data set. So we'll do, we're going to grab an ADX Excel task pane one. I'll just call this TP. And we'll say TP equals ADX Excel task pane one. This ADX Excel task panes collection item one task pane instance and we'll do TP task table adapter fill and we'll fill it with the TP tasks data set and the tasks table now for word let's do let's just take this a, a little slow uh, 
while also trying to move quickly but I'm going to copy that and paste it here and I need to change that to say WTP and instead of an ADX Excel task pane this is an ADX Word task pane the next I can take this code whoops copy it and then I'll just control V paste it change to uh, change that to WTP I'm gonna copy and paste there and both of these lines are wrong or those two th that this needs to be ADX word task panes collection one and instead of a task pane instance it's a current task panes instance and let's take the WTP object our tasks table adapter fill and WTP tasks data set dot tasks and if these aren't showing up for you, just make sure that you have gone into, into the design view of this form and set your task table adapter and your task data set. Set their modifiers to at least internal so that you have access to them from the add-in module. This is true of the PowerPoint task pane as well. So let's do the same thing by grabbing both of these lines of code. And uh, before we do that, actually, let's change something. I was about to make a big mistake here. We want to remove or edit this line to say, Word app active document full name and that's a key point we want Excel to use the active workbook we want Word to use the active document and we're going to have PowerPoint use the active presentation so I'm going to copy this line and paste it here and we'll start out by doing this correctly we'll grab the PowerPoint app active presentation and we'll grab full name and here I'm going to change this object name to PTP and this will be ADX PowerPoint task pane 1. Next we'll just go ahead and grab these two lines and paste them here and we'll change the names paste and this needs to be actually two different values so this needs to be the PowerPoint task panes collection item one and we're back to using the task pane instance here all right and then change that to PTP task table adapter and PTP task table adapter and we're all set now I'll just save it and we're ready to move back over here to the add-in module and we are going to change we're going to select our tasks add-in tab and let me just open up the properties window and I don't want I know we did this earlier we, we put this uh, start date field in here but I'm going to delete it we're not going to do that we're just going to allow the user to uh, use the task title the due date and create a task so what we want to do for create task I'm going to come over here to the to the button and I'm going to just double click on the on click event and here what I want to do is call create task and we're going to pass the we're going to pass the value of the task title field which is the text property then we're going to do the same thing for task due date text and then for the source we're going to pass the host name of the add in express module or the this object and that will take care of our of our button now let's go back over here to the add in module and do the same thing for our command bar Again, we're not going to use the start date, so I can right click and choose delete. I'll say yes. And then for our create task, I'm going to move over to here in our properties window, and I'll just double click in the click property. It stubs out our method for me. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to call create task, but instead we'll call the, uh, it'll be slightly different instead of task title it's actually task title 
CBE for uh, command bar. And then we'll grab due date AC. And if you remember from previous videos, this control is hosting a .NET date time picker control. And what we'll do is grab the active instance, which will return the active instance of this control. And then we'll grab the text property to get the value entered or selected from that control. And then for the source parameter, we'll set this.hostName just as we did previously. With this done, let's turn our focus back to the add-in module where we want to take a look at the task add-in backstage view. In between parts, I've edited a little bit and taken out some stuff to, to simplify it uh, where we really just have a button, the select database button, as well as a couple items, uh, the location label and a connection stream label. And so what this will allow us to do is click this button and browse for the location of a task database, the, the access task database. Now, one caveat is it has to have the same data structure as what we've coded for. But this would allow me to have different task databases, select them and use them as I want and then also have the task panes update to reflect the data that's inside. So let's start out by uh, creating a method for the on click event here of our button, of the select database button. And I'll double click to, to create our method. And for this method, all we do is we are going to call uh, this project's properties settings default and I have added a custom database location actually I have two custom properties that have added one is custom database location the other is custom uh, connection string the database location is the actual file path and file name to the access database and the custom connection string is the entire custom connection string or, or to, the, to the task database uh, so it, right here what I want right now is the custom database location and this equal a method that we have not created yet called select database file. And this select database file method will allow us to browse our file system and select the access database. And once done, what we're going to do is call another method I haven't written yet called update connection string. Let's stub out both of these methods real quick. The select database file will return a string. And then the update update connection string is just a it, it doesn't return a value, it's just a, a method. Now for here, for select database file, I want to go back over here to the add-in module and we are going to add a open file dialog control to the add-in module design surface. So we have open file dialog one and let's go back to our code and what we'll do is we'll say open file dialog one uh, initial directory We'll just set it to the C drive. An open file dialog filter, we're going to set a filter so that it opens up access files, or at least that we can set we can set the dialog to filter to just access files. And I'm going to call them access 2010 files. And then we'll also allow for all files. And we'll do open file dialog again. We'll say the filter index is equal to two, which will default to all files. And then open file dialog one, restore directory. Uh, what we do is by restoring directory, we'll just restore the file dialog b back to whatever it was previously instead of just using our C, the C drive initial directory that we've set. So what we'll do is we'll create an if statement. So if open file dialog one, show dialog, if it equals, 
to dialog result of OK, then we want to take some action here. And what we'll do is a try block. In this case, we'll say return open file dialog file name. Let's try that again. File name. And if anything goes wrong, we'll catch the exception. We'll do a message box. In this case, we'll just keep it very simple. Error. And we'll show the message from the exception. And that's it. And we're going to return, in this case, just a blank string. So let's handle our else. And if we get nothing, likewise, we'll return a blank string. Just making sure I have those in the right place. I think I do. Okay, I'll save it. Let's move over here to update connection string. And what we'll do with connection update connection string is we are going to first create a string object that we'll call CNN string. And for the value, I actually have, instead of typing all of this, let's just copy and paste this, which is just the beginning part of a string for an access file. All it's missing is the actual data source parameter. And we'll, we'll add that at another time. So I'm going to say paste. Then we need string db path, which is string concat. And we're going to say data source equal. And then we're going to grab a property. So my tasks end to end properties settings default. And then what we want is the custom database location. And last, what we want to do is set my tasks properties. We want to take the custom connection string and we want to set it equal to the concatenation of CNN string and DB path. So all we're doing here is we're taking, we're basically rebuilding the string after you select the database the string is rebuilt and then saved into settings. Now the last thing we need to do is actually initialize when the backstage shows we need to update our our labels so that they display our file path and the connection string of the currently selected tasks database. So let's go back to the add-in module designer, grab the task add-in backstage view and then I'm going to go to properties and we'll double click the on show event to stub out that event. And here what we want to do is grab the labels that I have here. I have I created those two labels, one for the location and one for the connection string. And I just gave them the BCK STG for backstage uh, prefix. And so for the connection string, I want to say that it's caption equals string concat connection string. And then we'll say my tasks end to end properties settings default and custom connection string. All good there. And then we'll do the same thing for the location. So say location and my tasks end to end properties settings fault and custom database location. Okay, so just real quick in review, what we have, we, we coded the button that will allow us to select the database and it's calling, what we're going to do is set the custom property of custom database location equal to the value from select database file and select database file then allows us to browse our directory for the location of our tasks file and then once we, we have that value, we set it here in this custom database location property. And then lastly, we update the connection string within all of the properties. And then lastly, whenever the backstage displays, we make sure that our labels 
display the current connection string and location just for convenience. And so we have two more things left to do. One, we need to update our Outlook form, which I'll go ahead and open up here. We need to make a quick change here to this grid, add a little bit of code, and then we also need to do one more thing on the Excel task pane to refresh the data uh, after we've done something here. So we'll do those real quick and we'll be done. So first off, let's just edit the columns in this grid. To add, we'll add a new column, and what I want it to be is an unbound column, and we'll call this column selected, and the type is going to be a checkbox type, and the header text will be select. We'll say OK, and it's exactly where I want it to be in terms of the positioning of the columns. We'll say OK here. And so now you see next to the ID column, we have this select column, which is going to allow us to select a row, and then we'll look for it in our code and, and take action. Also, too, what we want to do is add another button right here. And I want to first let's show my windows again. But I want this button to be image and text. And then for the actual image itself, we're going to import an icon. I'm going to go to my Visual Studio image library, which I've saved over here in my favorites, but it's the common, the, the Visual Studio image library that comes with Visual Studio. And I want to go to my to the actions folder and the PNG folder and down here towards the bottom should be an icon there we go the task HS icon we'll say okay and for the name I just want to call this BTN create outlook tasks and if you're paying attention there's that's exactly what this will do we're going to create outlook tasks based off of the items in the grid and for and for its position I want to move it all the way over here to the far left hand side and then let's change its caption or text to create Outlook tasks and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start out writing the code and what this method will do is We'll go back right here and we'll see that for each of these selected items, what we want to do is loop through this, all the rows in this grid, find any that have been selected by the user, and then create tasks for each one of them. So the first thing we'll do is create an integer. We'll call it chk count. And we'll set it to zero. Then we'll do a for each statement. And so for each data grid view row we'll call it RW in this tasks data grid view rows so for each row what we want to do is check and see if RW cells and let's look for the selected cell or column in the value and what we're doing is we're just going to check if it's not null which means it's going to be checked then let's let's do something and in this case what we'll do is we'll call create outlook task item and we'll pass this row to it and create task item is a private method doesn't return anything create outlook task item data grid view row we'll call it row data and the first thing we want to do is create an outlook application object and we're going to grab this forms outlook object property next we want to create an outlook task item We'll call it task and we'll use our outlook object 
and we'll call the create item method. And it's going to be an outlook.ol item type of task item. Now let's take this task and we'll set the subject to row data, cells, title, value, and to string. Task due date equals row data, cells, due date, value, and we need to go ahead and cast this as a date time value. And we need to cast this as a just a system date time. Even though we're not passing this, we'll just go ahead and set the the importance to outlook importance type of normal. And we'll do the same for uh, task status we, we don't we're not tracking that in this app but we'll go ahead and set a status to it of outlook an outlook task status of not started and we can take our task body and concatenate source with the row data cells source field And we'll take the task body we'll add a new line and we're going to add to the body the the link column And then we'll close the task. And when we close it, we're going to go ahead and save it. And for the inspector close type, the save mode will say just save. And what this will do is automatically save it. It won't prompt the user uh, to do the save. Now it's worth mentioning here that uh, you should go ahead and release your com objects using the release com object method. I'm not going to do that here for the demo and just for the sake of time. This leaves us with one more bit of code, and we're going to go back to the ADX Excel task pane. We finished this, I promise. Then we can just we can run a little demo, and you can see the code in action. And we'll be done with this part of the series. And what we're going to want to do is let's just go into uh, the code view. We'll go all the way down to the bottom, and what we need to do is add a new method that we'll call refresh grid. So this is a private method doesn't return anything let's call it refresh grid and what this will do is we'll take the table or the tasks table adapter take its connection and the connection string uh, property and we'll say that it equals my tasks end to end properties settings default and we're going to set it to the custom connection string and then we'll take the this task or the task table adapter yet again and we'll fill it using the tasks data set tasks table. Then we'll do the tasks binding source filter. We'll set it to source equal Microsoft Excel and what this will do it'll filter the grid since this is running inside of Excel it's only going to show Excel or tasks that were created inside of Excel now one thing I want to do is change the load to no longer say what it's already what it's doing right here I just want to go ahead and call refresh grid And then let's add a button over here, just a new button. We'll change its 
text to say refresh. And we'll say the display type is just the text. And I'm going to double click on it to stub out the click event. And I'm just going to leave it with the tool strip button one. And what we want to say here as well is refresh grid. And with that, we're done. So let's just compile, see uh, if I made any mistakes along the way. And I did, so let's just take a look at these real quickly. Let's see where I went wrong there. Right there, that's great. And right here, yep. You can see what I did there, got a little sloppy. Let's build, see what's left. Looks like we're good to go. All right. Okay, so let's just run it in the debugger. It's going to open up Excel for us. And we'll see the tasks that we've created in the previous uh, part of the end-to-end -end demo in part three. And what I want to do here is let's go here to the My Task portion, and we're going to see the location and the connection string set here. They're a little, little big, but we see where the path in our bin and debug directory where the task folder is, and also my connection string and if I want to select a new database, I can come over here to, uh, well, it looks like my filter, something's wrong with my filter here. I shouldn't have anything here in the file name. Let's uh, close this real quick and look at our code. So if we go over here, let's look at uh, add in module is where it was. There we go, select database field. That should be filter, not file name. There we go. Now let's run the debugger. We see our task, and if we go right here to the backstage, I can select a database, and I'll go to the demos and select this database, which will have no data in it, and I didn't write any code that would automatically update our labels, so I'll just refresh this way, come back down and we'll see that the data string and the location have indeed updated. But you'll notice that down here it hasn't, we'll just need to, uh, we'll need to click the refresh button and there we have it. So now I wanna go back, reselect my data from my project. There we go. Refresh and we're back, that's great. And we can look here on the My Task, and we see that we can put in a sample, or we can put in a title. I'm going to put in Sample Ribbon Task. I'll put the due date as 2-11-2012, and Create Task. And there we have it. We see our Sample Ribbon Task all set up. The link with Book 1 because, well, I haven't saved it yet. So let's close this. And we'll go open up Outlook. And let's open to the Tasks folder where we'll see all of our tasks. And we can select any of the tasks we want. So I'll just select these two and then hit the Create Outlook Tasks button. And we have both of those tasks created for successfully, just as we would expect. And I'd leave it up to the user. Notice the code doesn't delete them. I'd leave it up to the user uh, to delete them if they want, but you certainly could do that as well uh, if you wanted to extend this add-in further. And so with all of that, mercifully, we're done. I know it was an extra long demo, but there's a lot of features to show. And keep in mind, too, uh, we coded two different versions of the Office toolbar. So for Office 2010, and portions of Office 20, uh, 2007, the ribbon would display in the, the code that we have to create tasks using the ribbon as I displayed or as I demoed in Excel just a second ago, that will display correctly in Office 2020, in 2010 and Office 2007. If we were in Office 2003, we would instead see the command bar and the code would work just the same. Um, but the great thing is, even though we coded both of those UI elements, Add in Express will handle for us the display of the proper one, whether it's the command bar or the ribbon, given whichever version is, whichever version of Office is the host application. So again, that's it for this demo. What we'll do in the next and final demo of this end-to-end -end series is we'll cover deployment topics.